Hey everyone, what's up? Are you one or zero here? So today we're going to cover another scenario from Cloud Goat. Um, this is part of a series that I'm creating for cloud security on AWS. So this scenario is called RCE Web App. And there are two different exploitation paths for this one. Because in the scenario, there are different resources like ELB, EC2, different S3 buckets, RDS. And the scenario starts with two different IAM users, Lara and MacDuck. We can go through any of these to finalize or to reach out to our goal. Um, and they're having very similar scenarios. So as a summary, um, if we start with the user Lara, we're going to find a load balancer and an S3 bucket. Um, we will check for vulnerabilities and we will find an RCE exploited on a web application. We will find some confidential files um, and then we will reach out to um, highly secure RDS database instance. Alternatively, we can start with MacDuck user and we will find some S3 buckets. Um, we will find from there some SSH keys, private and public key. Then we will get into an EC2 instance. From there, um, we will find database credentials um, and connect to a database. So it's quite cool in general, teaching you so many different services and different exploitation steps. If you're ready, let's jump right in. So as always, I'm started with the, I've started with the initiation and of course it created some access key and um, for the secret key uh, for both of the users, uh, Lara and MDoc. Uh, I just added to my AWS um, configuration file. You can just use it like this as well by creating a profile, AWS configure dash dash profile and a profile name that you want to create. It's going to ask for access key and secret key. Just type it there. So the, so the profiles would be ready for us to use and um, do the further exploitation steps. As you can see, I just added both of the profiles with the following comments, AWS configure dash dash profile and specify the rest. Of course, the next step generally for me is um, running an enumeration tool. I'm using Paku, which is, uh, as far as I know, another tool by Reno Security. Super easy to use. Uh, you're just typing import keys comment um, and I'm in, in importing the keys for Lara profile and then I'm running the for, uh, following comment run I am brute force permissions there are other options as well uh, these are just my go-to comments right when we run this we will see following allowed permissions on different services for instance I'm seeing EC2 describe instances will be one of the um, comments that will be useful there's S3 I can get list um, etc object so this will be useful other services so let's do the same um, action on the second user as well. We're going to start with the first user, but I just want to show you that the permissions for both of the users are the same um, or very similar. So this is just something to show here because in the previous videos, I just said that I run Paku and show the comments, but I did not show the output. So because it takes a while and I didn't want to edit the video, but the time I did. So um, as you can see, the permissions for the second user is very similar to the first one. So good to know, um, we will do some actions on EC2 and S3 according to the outcome output from Paku. Very cool. So let's start with the first user, Lara, as we enumerated the permissions enough. Uh, since I can, um, yeah, first, since we have this user, we can, of course, verify the user's um, username and ac account ID with the following comment, SDS get caller identity. Um, after that, since I know that I can list the buckets um, and get the content of it, I can just uh, run the co following comment, AWS, S3, LS, give the profile name to see all the bucket names. Um, it's not necessarily that we have access to or we can see the content of the buckets, but we're going to try it, of course. Um, that's the following um, syntax, S3, uh, slash, slash, bucket name, and then the right profile name. As you can see, we don't have access on this bucket. Let's try another one. Uh, the secret one, it's also not allowed. So the only thing that we are having permissions to is CG dash logs and continues like that. And it continues like that. So I am just typing this down in the same syntax, giving the profile for it. It will give me a bunch of um, folders, directories under the main bucket. So we're just going to follow it down. We can just write the command dash dash recursive. Um, if you want to see all the files under it, I'm just like showing two different options here um, in case you're not familiar with it. 
So we're just seeing one by one there are different folders. I mean, in a realistic scenario, that may be that there will be so many different folders, so many different files. So definitely makes sense to run recursive to see everything in a map, basically. And from there, of course, you can um, you can check what do you want to read, what do you want to copy, etc. Yes, and I'm showing here the recursive option in case you're interested. So let's see, dash dash recursive to show what kind of uh, weave do we have. Perfect, it shows the folder name and then the um, subfolders and the file name. So this one looks interesting, that's a log file. Maybe I can grab some URLs or maybe EC2 instances, um, some information like that. I'm just copying it with the S3CP command and I'm reading the file. As you can see, um, there are some URLs we are seeing in here, some endpoints. I'm seeing HTML, CSS. Uh, HTML seems interesting. Maybe I can use that one. Um, let's see, what else do we see in the file content? We're seeing elastic load balancing. That's good to know. We're seeing some HTTP uh, URL, some HTML endpoint, CSS endpoint. Good to know. Cool. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do before I check it in my browser is I'm going to check with the ELBV2 comment for um, describe load balancers. Of course, I need to attach the profile to see like the load balancers um, information, the um, all the DNS name and everything. You can see the ARN, the DNS name um, for the load balancer. Of course, we can go for the DNS name to check on the browser. And as you can see, we're seeing some website here. Uh, for more information, of course, we can go to that HTML endpoint that we've seen in the log, logs. And once we go there, uh, we're finding a, a comment option here. Then we can run our comments, for instance, who am I? It's basically allowing us to run comments on the server. Um, and the classic um, Unix syntax, like uh, with the common ID, um, another comment, it basically runs it for us, separates the comments. That's great. What we can do is uh, in my um, in my Mac, I'm just going to create a SSH keys, SSH key. Um, for this specific example, we are also specifying it with the ED25519 um, and we're creating it like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the public key and I'm going to attach this public key um, to this uh, to this um, to the server um, to the service authorized keys file so that um, I can connect to it later using my private key. So I'm just going to write the following um, comments, echo and then the public key and then add this to the Ubuntu's um, authorized keys file. You can also verify the file if it's written properly. I mean, it's given the green um, color, but I mean, of course, it's better to just read it like that, not assuming that it's um, error free. Uh, let's also check the public IP address of this. If you write curl infconfig.me, it will give it to us. And what we can do is we can go to that directory uh, of, our, of my current user's uh, home folder um, and we will go to .ssh. We're going to write the um, currently created um, private key. The Ubuntu is like the default user for Ubuntu servers. Um, we're going to write the IP address here for this EC2 instance, say yes, and you're connecting directly as our authorized keys file is in the EC2 instance, Ubuntu uh, users authorized keys file. Cool. Next steps, as always, um, we need to check for the metadata API information um, using the following curl command, the same classic IP address that we always write, um, and the endpoints latest from there, you can check for metadata, user data. I'll start with the user data, which will give me, um, some comments, uh, like a comment history, basically like PSQL and you're seeing basically the full, um, credentials and everything here. That's one way to do it. The other way to reach out to our goal is to start with the MacDuck user. Um, and we are doing the exact same steps. First, checking with the SDS get caller identity to see the account ID and the username to see everything is good. And the permissions are very similar to the first user. So we're going to check for the buckets. We're going to see which buckets content are uh, we have the permission to see. Um, we're going to check one by one which one we, which one we can see. 
the same syntax s3 slash slash the bucket name let's write them down and see if it's gonna work we're starting with the key store let's see if it's working yes we uh, it does work we can we do have a uh, permission on it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy both of the files it seems like this is a public and private this is public and private keys it seems like and of course you're gonna use aws s3 cp which stands for copy comments cool let's save it to our current working directory um and let's also copy the public key file i'm assuming um based on the file extension pop the others are uh, these are private and public key but we will see the file content of course yes it's a private key and this is a public key it's, as it seems very cool what we can do here is first we can check for aws easy to describe instances for running instances so that we can actually find the um the public ip address for ec2 instance that's in the running state we're finding it in here public ip address that's very cool then since i have the public and private key for this um for this ec2 instance i can just um, connect it like that since i also know the public ip address that's very cool uh it's very similar to the previous example as well with the lara user and from there i will do the exact same thing with the curl latest uh, we're gonna check for metadata api um let's continue with the metadata endpoint let's see of course we are going with im what i'm looking for is basically security credentials let's copy that as well and we're seeing a role here we're also copying and pasting that to see the credentials perfect so as you know we're gonna add it to our um, AWS credentials files uh, just like that and create a profile um from that profile of course we can run paku again to see the um see the results what kind of um permissions do we have on this ec2 instance profile let's have a quick look as you can see there are different permissions that we have on ec2 s3 uh, we can get list objects um many many permissions that we have good to know let's continue based on the permissions that we have so now we can check for buckets again maybe we have more access using this profile so let's attach the profile and see the buckets and let's try to see on the content of these buckets let's start with the secret one it looks juicy maybe there are cool information and yeah we can list it there's a db.txt file let's save it to our current working directory and read the file content of course what we're gonna do is we need to use the co command cp instead of ls as um we're trying to copy the file it worked so we can just read the file and as you can see the db name username password um completely against the best practices but this is a ctf so here we are so what we're gonna do is since we're uh, connected to the ec2 instance we can use this to connect to the um database we're gonna use psql uh, for the postgresql connection um uh, for that we also need to check um information on the db, db instances um of course we're going to use the rds command for that and then describe db instances very similar to the ec2 one that we've done so far um and we need to check the db um, databases in this way uh, let's see what do we have here for ARN, um, db name, there we go, db instance identifier, the address, so the address should work for me. I'm going to copy that and uh, write it in here, then username and the database name I also need to add, dash u, the username, where was that, in the db.txt file, here we go, cg admin, and then the database needs to be defined as well, dash d, uh, let's write this down and it will automatically prompt us for a password we already have it as well we'll just copy and paste that one as well perfect we're connected so we can look for databases the tables uh, we can look for tables um, under this database and as you can see we find one called sensitive information you know the drill select all from uh, table name 
what do we have? We have the super secret passcode and the value. So it's CTFish. So we found the values just like that. In a realistic, um, real real world scenario, probably it's not going to be like that. But still, you can um, extract a lot of information, expose data, etc. Right. So it was not such a long video, but it was such a cool um, exercise in cloud code. I don't think it was really hard. I think it was just long and it requires you to know different services. Uh, we focus a lot of EC2, S3 or IM in the previous exercises. So this one also involves a bit more like RDS and load balancers, etc. So I think it was a cool one. Um, so right, so this video ends just like that. Drop a comment and let me know um, if you want to see a specific content in the next videos. Cheers, guys.